Stalking, King of People. I, ooh, 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 I seem to be moving diagonally. My mouse is weird. There we go. <laughs> Nice. Wait, going past those two. The uh, the certain structure of the building does appear to be, well, certainly not logical or reasonable in any sense of dwarvenly fashion at all. It's ridiculous, undefensible. <laughs> all these windows on the outside. <laughs> Quite a bit of chatter coming in here from the center, laughing and merriment, uh, particularly from within the center. Let's assume where he is. Yes, the uh, the center here has a set of tables around which a uh, few groups are located. Uh, this table in particular has uh, two lively individuals, uh, the first of whom, ah, uh, well, remember, like, the last time you guys saw the Rat Levalm and the time before that, and I gave you those descriptions. <laughs> well, you pretty much have the same feeling that you have around him as you always have. Of course, if you don't have certain magical items because they are weapons or armor, then you wouldn't have those feelings. Mm. You will not have to make a die roll, though, just like okay. I didn't make you do it the <laughs> second time. I'm, I'm a bit curious over the fact that how my quirk works with this. Ah, uh, you know, you can handle that yourself. <laughs> I sh oh, this is going to be weird. I mean, it's basically opposite. Oh, you, you want me to talk oh. to them while being relaxed? and quite lush and just stretching and meditating. The uh, and other dead. individual, and uh, you can see that perhaps she might be important only because Evrat is reaching across the uh, the seating area and holding her hand. Um, the unbidden thought that springs to mind when first lurking at her is that, lurking? Looking at her, is that she belongs in an art gallery. The uh, woman, uh, mid-late 20s, perhaps early 30s, is tall and slender with uh, long hair that seems to glow and the light of uh, the restaurant. Her skin is pale and delicate, uh, flushing bright red with the slightest exertion or embarrassment. She's currently dressed in a dark dramatic gown, a great offset to her complexion. Her eyes a crystal blue sparkle with both mirth and intelligence, as uh, Evrant appears to be at the tail end of telling a joke. I'll we'll try to make an entrance that doesn't disturb his joke. Okay. A subtle entrance, perhaps. Yeah, well, it was just hard as an adventurer, so he'll sort of slow down a little bit at the door, and I'll read to finish his joke before really walking in. The uh, storm cloud eyes of Rat Lavelle turn at the uh, sound and uh, look straight at you. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll meet them completely. Yes. You know? As Rat will look back and say, Oh, if you too, please, will excuse us. There's a few friends who are visiting. And these two nobles, like, look behind them. Sort of, like, make their own judgments and assessments based on your appearance. And then nod uh, politely to Rat and Renee and uh, walk off. Here, yeah, the twit and the douche. Mm. Rat uh, puts on a smile, walking towards him, feeling quite uplifted in the Rat's uh, sort of company. He still has sort of a, as if his voice is much more dramatic than usual, much more, as if he's a man upon, who, upon whose shoulders the entire world is resting. Evrod will stand from his chair and say, Dwo Hiram Harska, it is good to see that you have gotten my invitation. Evrod, it's... And the lady... I'm, uh, not very glad on your behalf. She, uh, will actually stand from her chair as well and nod. Yes, I have heard a little about you, Dwo Hiram Harska. You have been uh, some topic of interest uh, with my betrothed. Looks over and nods and bows slightly. It's a pleasure to meet you. You are a sight for sore eyes, if I must say so. She, uh, her skin, which does easily flush red, does blush slightly at your words. It's quite a uh, location, this. Yes, the certain talents of the chef here, whose name I have difficulty with, are hard to come by, but uh, for an event of this caliber, I thought I would spare no expense regarding it. 
and he is certainly one of the best chefs. Ah, there he is now. Ah, and like he like ever like raises like his hand like try and like call a name and like he like sort of like stumbles over because he's not entirely sure. Oh, what was like the approved name? Uh, Aslati, yes, uh, Chef Aslati. And then the head slowly swivels and turns and you'd have to give the douchebag I.O. Chef credit. There's only like two or three seconds where he looks at you with like a mixture of like hate and disgust. And then he like disguises it completely again. Yes, Mr. Lavelle, what can I do for you? Oh, please, I have some new companions who've come in here. They'll need to be served as well. Certainly. Mr. Lavelle, I'll have my servers get right on it. And the chef walks away. Everyone coughs slightly, feeling glad at his, uh, at his newfound constitution. <laughs> Could be necessary. <laughs> you know, I won't be ordering the meat. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's salad for today. Probably won't be ordering much. Do you remember? You know, these elven spices really don't agree with this dormant stomach. But, uh, you will know, look to right and say, uh, and, uh, how, uh, we've been rather busy recently, so how, how have you been? Evrata uh, looks over to Renee and says, No, oh, well enough, uh, managing to, uh, do what I can in the pursuit of my hobbies and interests, uh, though as of late I have become, uh, uh, most busy. Uh, that being said, I had hoped to uh, speak with uh, you and your companions at some point uh, regarding perhaps a matter of, uh, of business. Well, as I'm every man of business, you can uh, say the word and we can go someplace private. Have a bit of a discussion if you'd like. Everyone looks around. There is not much of a uh, private uh, place here. Oh, one moment. And, uh, Evrod will, uh, stand, and he'll actually walk over to this table as they're having a discussion, lean in, like, chat a bit, maybe, like, 30, 40 seconds. The nobles there nod. They, like, look over at your group. They stand up, and they actually, uh, move out on their own accord. Hmm. And he has some social graces, just asking his guests to leave. Well... Maybe you should find another room to be in. And, uh, like, Navrat looks over at the, yep, identical twins sitting down who are actually, you know, they're not working right now, and say, uh, Radcliffe, Heathcliff, if you could keep an eye on the doors, please, and, uh, uh, give Chef as la And he shakes his head. Chef as Lari, our apologies. And, uh, you know handle that sort of business. I don't think it will take too long. Uh, the two uh, butlers nod, and they will move to stand uh, towards one door and then the other. And the doors, for now, will be closed behind them. Those two. <laughs> well, it was maybe there, not it. Hmm. Yes. The only reason you're able to see out here is because poor Gara just sitting out here, like, through the windows and shit. Oh, what about these two? Are they staying? Like, the two ladies are, like, blink at the fact that the doors have closed, <laughs> and, like, they both look over at the front and says, Private business. These are longtime friends of mine who've come a great deal of distance, and they'll both, like, look at each other and then nod. Everyone has an eccentric reputation, and they shall leave, too. Mm -hmm. Right, well, you'll uh, look over at Renee. Renee will sort of shrug. <coughs> you want me to leave too? No, that won't be necessary. We are joining ourselves together after all. I was actually interested in, well, sort of a proposition for you folks, as I am rather skilled in this sort of thing. Not maybe too much of a job, but uh, it is in the course of lives of adventurers such as yourselves that you do tend to come in contact with items of an hostile nature that attempt to subvert your personality or harm you in some form or fashion curses that are extremely difficult to break. One of my capabilities is the ability to handle cursed magic items and, uh, while not remove the curses from them, 
remove the curse from the person who is afflicted by it, in a manner of speaking. I don't uh, advertise this ability or hand it out freely, uh, but uh, a means of reward, uh, perhaps, should you decide to maybe do a task for me, like bring an end to the living dungeon that is creeping closer to our city. The living dungeon of Creel is a significant point of interest, in part because of the treasures it could contain, and because of, well, its history and reputation since its rose. It rose so close to the city. Its uh, primary attraction, at least from what I heard of Death's Hand, is that it wants to lure adventurers in, and I'm sure there are magical items and treasures abound in there, or at the very least forgotten knowledge pertaining to such. I have a great interest in those sorts of items, and I would like to employ you of sorts in an archaeological find. You do the world a service by ridding yourselves of the living dungeon, and you earn my favor and good wishes, which would translate to being able to handle items of a cursed nature for you in the future. Alternatively, if there was another payment you'd wish for, sort of shrugs, I'm not opposed to trades, either. Looks up. Leon looks up to draw here. Very not. This is, uh, is there a time frame for this sort of thing? Ron Shakespeare said, no, just that, uh, from what I've heard in rumors, it is creeping closer. And of course, if someone destroyed the dungeon before you did, uh, then I wouldn't. And he sort of laughs. You know, business. That's very much. Sure, it's a good offer. We have a, a lot to see to at the moment. I understand that your lives as adventurers can be rather busy. This invitation was also intended part to at least give you some respite for relaxation, although he uh, offers a kind smile. The fair may not be to your liking. Not everyone's palates are adjusted for this type of food. Yes, I, uh, I've tried before. I might, uh, might still stick around a little bit. I think some of the other guests would be interested in socializing. He shrugs. I can't speak for them personally. They're uh, giving me some, uh, he smiles, leeway. The I do have a reputation for eccentricity. But the Lavelle name carries with it a great deal of prestige. And some measure of power still, so while they don't really connect with me on a personal level, they're all happy to be around me. Some of them, I'm sure. You can attempt to speak with them as much as you like, but you do have a look of adventurers about you. Yeah, or a lot to that. Yeah, see? Even with our attempt, he, Leon looks down at his clothes. We, we cannot stand up. We cannot stand up to the standards here. Everett, uh favors Leon with a smile and says, "It's just a matter of training and grace. You have studied to be effective in battle in stressful situations of a physical nature. Most of the individuals here have not done such, so you can't really relate." That and adventurers do have a reputation for being troublemaking mercenaries. I'm I cannot. <laughs> I cannot deny this. Is sometimes the case. I do thank you for the hospitality, though. I take that the uh, paladin was uh, not let past the uh, the door guards. Yes, he's waiting outside with the other weapons. <laughs> he he, pref he preferred the attire of metal. Well, nothing I could do for him, then. Even if I were to uh, politely ask the guard to let him in, I don't think your companion would even want to come in. I doubt it. Yes, we, our folk, have naturally stout uh, constitution, but that is not what this kind of cuisine is made for. Indeed not. 
Anyway, that was the specific business that I had to address. It, in part, it was to have an excuse to speak with you again and fit myself into your schedules, but also so that you could find a moment to relax and maybe at least for an evening find a way to enjoy yourselves. Was there anything you had for me? You just used to think. And, uh... Uh, guys, did, did we have anything that we needed to talk to him about? I mean, At this point, there's so many balls in the air. I, I mean, originally I was going to talk to him about the eternal ring of the cathedral. On the other hand, he just gave us a way of getting it. Yeah. So, so what do you think? Mm-hmm. Talk to him about whatever you want. You have his time as of now. <coughs> uh-huh. What do you know, the black fang? Until Ajax like storms in and just like fucking like wrecks the entire thing and you know wouldn't that be awfully convenient? <laughs> you know, what, you know, yeah. While a lot of us are either Get unarmed, them, please, unarmed, honestly, <laughs> yeah, while we're unarmed, unarmored, or both. Oh shit! Yeah. No, having just... the bad guys actually do bad things for a while would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> So you want them to do bad things, like attempt to attack you while you're without weapons? Yeah. <laughs> then at least we'll have like, you know, sooner or later they'll begin to like sue us for for like slander or something. Yeah. Well, at any moment you can take your ball and leave Newport. <laughs> <laughs> Just could leave. No. Adventure somewhere. <laughs> She's like, no. You know, you know not that's another, another fog haven. Not another fog haven. You know, that's the hog one look tempting. Yeah. That was my second choice after Dragon Hall. I knew it would come to Thomas. this. Stupid investigation campaign. Ah. Frustrating. Thomas. We're back to see you. I when, we look back, when we look back on this campaign after the fact, it'll just be a legacy of Manakai saying, I told you so. I knew this would happen if we stayed in Newport. And and yes. and then a lot, yes, then a will. lot of, and a lot from sheep of not another folk game. <laughs> well, he's gonna he's gonna trademark that phrase. So getting back to the campaign, anything you wish to discuss with uh, Lavelle? Yes, <coughs> uh, Lavelle you know, we might as well be a little bit with him. So yeah, well, not not particularly something I think you can help with, but we've been having a lot of trouble in uh, Little Dragon Hall recently. He uh, furrows his brows. It's not a neighborhood with which I am familiar. I've not had much interest in Blue City, other than for its magical wonders it supposedly contains. Beyond that, there's issues with uh, rumors that certain important people in the city are not what they seem. We don't really have any magic that could be used to reveal what they truly are under whatever spell or think they might be hiding behind and acting without knowing what they are uh, well, could end in catastrophe Evrat uh, blinks and he says, well normally magic like that is extremely difficult to come by my understanding is that spells like that don't just exist but he offers a smile I'm not in the business of offering things for free, so uh, perhaps that would be an opportunity for you to say, take a break in the living dungeon. There is a magic item I possess that uh, would, uh, so long as you confronted and harmed an individual with the item, it is a glove, would allow you to see through invisibility or like illusion or if they're shapeshifters, like a were-tiger or a were-bear, or um, if they've even been, like, charmed or somehow mentally influenced, uh, you would be able to at least see that, at least for a short period of time, by usage of this glove. But you would have to harm someone. In what capacity? You could probably just slap someone with it. It has to be an upfront physical confrontation, however. Which means if you're actually wrong and they're not a shape changed or illusion or, you know, invisible or mentally influenced in some way, it's probably going to make them hostile. Huh. 
But this is something that exists, and you did just mention your problems and troubles. Perhaps that could be payment for uh, performing your archaeological dig on the living dungeon of Creel. Certainly keep it in mind. Yeah. Although, slapping someone in the face generally is not a great way to improve relations if they happen to not be what they might be. No, it is indeed not, which is why you'd better make sure <coughs> if you have it. It is one of several items I keep around, I've collected over the years. One such item that I heard rumors that you might have is something known as the Eternal Ring of the Cathedral. If that yes. is correct, I do possess one of those rings. I, I, heard, I heard just small rumors of it when I was visiting um, one of the local cathedrals. Yes, I imagine that some do still like to gossip about the Lavelle name. As you said, you are, it's a very well-known name. Not so much these days. Is that an item that you have particular interest in? I have some interest in it. Well, I am interested in uh, an archaeological dig in the living dungeon of Creel, but uh, tell you what, if you're able to clear that and bring back, say, like two magic items from there, and give them to me, I would uh, be willing to trade those for uh, either the ring or the glove or the ability to just accept your cursed magic items for you. Or maybe something else if that ends up catching your eye at some point. At least I will certainly keep your offer in mind. Yes. The confident nobleman offers a small shrug. Now, we probably shouldn't take up too much time from your guests. After all, this is your night. Giving a small smile to Renel. Yes, and again, congratulations. Uh, good to see people still able to enjoy these things yeah, with one another. Thank you. And uh, you'll hear from the table. Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll bow and say, uh, we will uh, keep your offer in mind and we'd also hope to be able to attend the wedding ceremony, the reception afterwards. I would hope so as well. Hopefully, he like looks over at Renee. I did want to wait for it to get a little bit warmer. And then, like, Renee looks back and counters, we have no idea how long that will take. He looks reproachful and sighs. You're right. Hmm. Well, if there's anything else you need but ask. You too, my lady. It looks at, uh, Renelle. Bows. Everett uh, will nod towards you, and uh, Renee will nod as well. Heathcliff, Radcliffe, you can open the doors again. I'm sorry to employ you like this. And uh, the doors will end up opening, and uh, the butlers will step in and resume their seats. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. uh, one last time, and then sort of take his leave around the corner. Uh, well, you know, he personally doesn't really have any interest in mingling with these kinds of people. Right. Although he's sure that some of the more, well, less frustrated and angry party members might, might want to do that sort of thing. Is Gerag in back yet? I don't think he is. About to Gerag. As uh, Dwohiram steps outside, he can, like, look through the window and see the douchebag high elf shell, uh, chef peering out at the group. Mm -hmm. I'll give him a small nod. Go yeah. to... He uh, sneers and shakes his head, but uh, he doesn't say anything through the window and walks away. Mm 
I want to be slightly pleased that half the party's gone. Mm. I can so kill I the rest. <laughs> so it was not not very nice, actually. I'll say yeah, that. Stayed the can hear it too. It was uh, not really my style. It's a lot of gloating, snobbish looks. Red was nice. His, his woman was lovely. He wanted us to clear the living dungeon of Creel, would trade the magic items found there, two to one. Oh. No wonder he has there so was many also, like a good offer. Also, that so actually. The others gathering that was out. convenient, Tamar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does sound almost convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Always so good. Hello. Oh, damn it. Hey, I can hear you. Yes. Hello. <laughs> it Everything. is actually, it is oddly convenient that he actually asked us to go clear it out. You see, you see, I received another offer for something, which is if we could bring back some of the monsters from there, that we could be. Do you remember some of those ritual components, the quite potent ones we used to use to the we found in the past? Yes. Bring back so someone's willing to sell it for, well, some of the... Yes. I presume dead, Griff, not alive. No, no, you need them alive. Okay, okay with the live kicking ones. Yes, he wants alive ones. Like, uh... <coughs> like, he's not going to be able to put them in his menagerie if they're dead. I suppose we need some traps then. Chaos Beast Menagerie? Let's see here. <laughs> Is sorcerer lives in the heights, and he's recently installed a menagerie in his back garden. He is offering handsome payment for fearsome monsters if brought back alive and healthy. And healthy? Mm. You're correct. Mm. Uh. I mean, healthy is subjective, right? In your <laughs> case, that would be special material components. Uh, one set for sorcerer spells, high level. Uh, per dangerous monster, you bring back from the living dungeon of Creel up to six. No. Oh. So we need some traps then. Tra traps. Well, what else do you suggest? So I suggest we uh, find out where Ajax is hiding. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just point I'm just pointing out this is some work we can. This is this is some other things we can do. You know, this work is getting quite appetizing of all it's offering. Yes, yes. I we are rather much in a hurry at this point. Um, with everything, it seems. To me, top most thing right now is Ajax. The second most thing is uh, helping a certain lady who is being tortured by a dragon as we speak. Yes. And uh, well, then comes all the monetary things. Well, there of course comes a double thing of that ring. We'd be effectively trading two magic items from the living dungeon for a favor past the bureaucracy, which, depending on what we're doing in Little Dragon Hall, might be useful. Depending on what magic items there are. I suppose. Did he say what magical items he had to offer? He just wants some. True to one, it's always a good trade in his case. Uh, Tempa says, no, 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 Garak said, what magic items does Avrat have to offer? Oh, well, a glove that could, you could slap someone in the face and it would show their glamoured forms. It, it would show form. what? Well, that sounds like exactly what we need then. I don't know, slapping the high diplomat in the face, is, I mean, that's not much better. <laughs> it's better than <laughs> attacking with lightning. Also, nothing, nothing says it will work exactly on him. We have no idea yeah, exactly He might just kill us at that point. Or try to. Which would force us to kill him. Or try to. Though I suppose, I suppose also getting a favor of the bureaucracy might also help if we were to do something with Ajax. Outside the college. Oh uh, no, it will not. Or someone will have to take the fall. But yes, we'll do it outside the college, it seems. Certainly not much help back in there. <sighs> I will find him, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, uh, Garak. Yes. Gestures out a hand, point, pointing towards the um, hex and blade attached to your belt. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Uh, here we go. A little uncomfortable not, not to be armed. 
and he hands out the rest of the weapons. Oh, yeah, weapon. <laughs> Should we first maybe head back to the Arcane College then, so you can get in proper gear? Sure. Let's go back. I mean, if we go and attack a place, we're well, like minus two AC. I don't feel too happy about that. So we go back. <laughs> All right. You folks leave the Sylvan Delights restaurant. Um, it's uh, certainly towards uh, nightfall by the time you uh, make it back from uh, the Sylvan Delights restaurant back to the Arcane College. Mm -hmm. Make it back successfully. Yep. So then, what do we need to do now? That's a waste of a day. Well, how do we find Ajax? It's the real question here. I don't know if we can immediately. So that might, might not be the thing we do now. How can we eventually? Or should we simply let him win? Let there be I, have to, I have to note, I, I believe this is getting you a little bit pushed over the edge. I mean, you, fa you failed spells you've used in the past multiple times now. I think partially due to just your... You're a little bit over the edge with this. Yes, yes I am. But that there doesn't other, really solve the problem, does it? There are other things that we can do that will hinder the black line. Perhaps, but this seems to be the most important one. It's not all about the Ajax to her. Hydra Ridden benefiting the three. Like I missed all of that. The, uh, the call ended up cutting out a little bit. I am the one who is hosting the call. One of you others should uh, end up hosting the call. That would right. be uh, better for your experience. <laughs>